Hi, everyone. I am so happy for all of you guys to join us tonight in attending our first virtual bar experience brought to you by St. Elder Artisanal Liqueurs alongside Rhode Island Monthly. Um, I'm Vanessa Brown. I'm our events and marketing manager here at Rhode Island Monthly. Basically here to open the show for you guys and tell you a little bit about um, what we have going on. So I want you guys to use our chat function to kind of talk amongst yourselves. Let us know whether you're mixing with us. If you purchased one of the bar kits um, from Little Bitta earlier today, or if you picked up some of the spirits at one of your local liquor stores, um, we're going to have the Q&A function open for you guys. So if you have any questions for our host or if for our featured bartender, um, ask away. We'll be answering them live. Um, I encourage you guys to tag and follow. So at Drink St. Elder and hashtag St. Elder RI. We want you guys to show us your um, cocktail mix with us tonight, and we're going to have a really fun time. So I am happy to bring in our host tonight. She is a colleague of mine. She is our foodie expert. She is our associate editor, Jamie Coelho. And she's coming in. Hi. So, Hi, Jamie. So, so far, we are started with our first virtual cocktail experience. Again, I'm Jamie, and I'm an associate editor at the magazine. And I write about all good things, food and drink, for the magazine and for our website, rimonthly.com. And tonight, I'm excited to announce that MS Walker has generously volunteered to donate per attendee to the Rhode Island Hospitality Employee Relief Fund, which is going to go to aid some of our hospitality workers who are currently out of work due to the current crisis. So thank you so much for doing that. It's, it means a lot to us. And um, throughout the series, they plan to donate up to $5,000 to that fund. So that is a big deal. Thank you so much. And if you didn't know, MS Walker is a local wine and spirits distributor and they also produce and distribute spirits nationally so we are happy to feature a few spirits from their portfolio tonight including saint elder artisanal liqueurs which you can use at home to create some really fun summer cocktails and tonight we're we're going to be featuring their, their pample mousse version which is a grapefruit flavor and we're really excited to do both a simple cocktail and a more upscale version of that, which we have bartender Willa Van Nostrand on hand to show us how to do that. And she is from the, the uh, company Little Bitta Artisanal Cocktails. So if you're at home and you're mixing up cocktails, be sure to take a picture of what you're making and put it on Instagram and tag at drink St. Elder and also use the hashtag St. Elder RI, which is S Elder RI. And you could be entered to possibly win a cocktail kit. So that's pretty cool. So Willa, can you tell us a little bit about the spirits we're gonna be using tonight and the cocktails that we're gonna be making? Of course, of course. Hello, I'm so happy to be yeah. here. Uh, my name is Willa Van Nostrand. And I'm from Little Bitta, and I'm going to tell you a little about the spirits and the core we're using this evening. I have them on my back bar. So I'll begin with Ranger's Deluxe Organic Vodka. This beauty is a, it's a vodka made out of non-GMO corn. It's made in the heartland of America. It's made in Missouri. And it's gluten-free because it's corn-based, of course. And it's got some nice peppery notes, kind of, um, I'd say, white pepper. I've heard people say turmeric. I think that might be a little spicy for my, for my tasting palate, but I understand uh, those notes in, in this case. And we're also using St. Elder Pamplemousse. Uh, this lovely light pink liqueur is made in America. That says summer, for sure. So summery, so bright. Uh, pretty much everything that you add this to uh, gives it a little bit of life and, and vibrancy, which during the summer 
is always welcome, especially when you want some really kind of simple, straightforward cocktails. Mm -hmm. So this is an all natural product. It's made with the extracts and uh, aromas, aromatics of pink grapefruit. Mm -hmm. And I've tried a lot, I've tried a lot of different grapefruit liqueurs that are out there on the market and um, you know they can tend to really go either way they can be kind of like a little too syrupy and saccharine um, these are nice and light and refreshing mm -hmm. yeah this is like bright there's a zest the fruit really comes forward like actual pink grapefruit flavor and yeah it's just really zesty um, I like All of a sudden, I feel like I'm a good bartender at home just using that in the drink that you delivered to my house today. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So Will is doing cocktail delivery right to your door, too, and she's creating these cocktail kits. And you actually just got a license for featuring virtual cocktail parties at home, too, right? I did, yes. So I, for years, uh, for 10 years almost, I've been doing garden to glass cocktails for events, everything from weddings to private parties and festivals, you know, think like water fire and oyster festival. And all of a sudden, like pandemic strikes and what do I do? What's a cocktail caterer to do? So right. I shifted toward curbside pickup and delivery. Mm -hmm. And so I'll come, to your house and bring you a beautiful beverage. Uh, and if you have, we'll schedule a virtual cocktail party that I'll, I'll either host and you tune into or you can host. And we'll tune into that and we'll design recipes just for the event. And I'm just going through, going through the seasons here like I usually do and, and sharing the ingredients that are fresh and vibrant right now. Um, in this case, it's through the garnishing that we're using this evening. Mm -hmm. And I'll get into that a little bit more. But yes, before we dive into our first cocktail, the Greyhound, the St. Arthur Greyhound, we have a poll for you. So take it away, Jamie. Yeah, so there should be a poll popping up on your screen right now. And it tells a little bit about the history of the Greyhound. So. Think about the name, and do you think it got its name from the bus line, or do you think that's just a coincidence? Can everybody take a moment to vote now? Has anyone ever taken the Greyhound bus? I know I have in New York City, so um, there's a lot that has changed since 1945, that's for sure. Really? Take a minute to vote. So, it looks like 82% of you are pretty smart and know the history of the Greyhound. Yes, the Greyhound is named after a fancy restaurant that was present at all the bus terminals starting back in 1945. So that's where the drink gets its name. So 82% are correct and 18%. Oh, actually, sorry, it's false. I thought that you guys were into it, apparently. You don't think it's named after the bus. That's 82% that said it was false. And I was assuming that you would get it right, but it is named after the Greyhound Bus Terminal, the little restaurant that was attached to it. So, And with that, do you want to demonstrate the drink and show us how to make that drink, Philip? I would love to. Um, so this recipe is just really bright and lovely for entertaining or if you're sipping for entertaining virtually or at a distance. Uh, and if you're sipping virtually, perhaps you have a cocktail kit in hand, maybe you're already drinking this. Um, but yeah, I'll dive, I will dive right in. So to begin, the Greyhound cocktail is based on a, on a classic and the a recipe originally is kind of described, mentioned in Harry Craddock's uh, Savoy cocktail book, this kind of like emblematic cocktail book from the 1930s. And he doesn't, he refers to the grapefruit cocktail as being the same kind of description as the recipe. And so in a traditional Greyhound, it's gin, whoa, gin and fresh grapefruit juice. Now, when usually when you go to a bar, 
you'll order a Greyhound and they'll give you vodka. Sometime after the war, um, the American palate shifted from gin to vodka. And a lot of the recipes that now call for vodka that are based on classics used to be gin. And um, it's really fun kind of history to get into if you're, if you're into nerding out on cocktails like I am. Um, and by the way, if you have any questions along the way, please just say the word and I can um, chat about those things. And then, yeah. So if anyone has any any questions at all, Willow is the expert on all things cocktails. Thanks. Um, so this recipe is based on the grapefruit cocktail. And I have the book here. I like I pulled out my, my library. And this is the Savoy, the Savoy cocktail book. Book warming over here. Um, and the recipe calls for, let's see. The recipe calls for the grapefruit cocktail. This is for six people, mind you. The juice of one and a half lemons, two small spoonfuls of grapefruit jelly, mm -hmm. grapefruit jelly, uh, and four glasses of gin, of course. Then you add ice and shake. Mm -hmm. So that recipe is kind of the basis of the Greyhound. And no, there's no, there's no grapefruit jelly in this, but we do have the pamplemousse liqueur which is a really, really nice flavor mm -hmm. yeah good really good citrus really good balance of sweetness and sourness and i'm going to build that recipe for you presently if you're at home with your cocktail shaker and your spirits hurrah i'm very proud of you uh, and if you're drinking anything and everything fabulous if you have a kid wonderful um i what? have Right? So you can make it this weekend as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, totally. Um, I have a glass chilling. And I'm using a cocktail glass because originally this drink was up. And I will begin with my bottom shaker. I'll build this dry. When I say I build it dry, that means that I am not building over ice because I want to have control over how much water dilutes into my cocktail, into my solution before I shake it. This way I have a better sense of, of being able to control um, how watery my cocktail is essentially. Mm -hmm. So you grab your bottom shaker or your bar glass if you're using that, uh, and then you build. Let's see, I have a funny kind of screen to work space ratio here. So hopefully that will work and I'll hold things up so you can see. I can see this. That's fine. That's can you? Okay, good. Just holler if I'm like out of view and I'll say, oh yeah, we'll get back in there. Okay, so for the St. Elder Greyhound, we have an ounce and a half of Ranger's Deluxe Organic. So you put your jigger, this is your cocktail jigger, over your bottom bar tin and you pour directly over the bar tin so that if you spill, none of your beautiful spiritus nectar uh, goes onto your surface. It goes into your barton, this precious liquid. Yeah, so, not that, nope. uh, I'm gonna show you just, there's, I have a little bevel here. Maybe, perhaps you can see. Uh, that's an, an ounce and a half, half in this jigger. This side's two ounces, this side is one ounce. There are different sizes and different ounces of, um, mm -hmm. for different jiggers. So, thought you should, thought you should know. So over your barton, pour into your jigger and all these things kind of slow just so if you're going along we're at the same pace into your bottom pin fabulous uh then it's one ounce of the saint elder pamplemousse again over your bottom tin so funny i'm going up on my tippy toes here this whole side of this jigger is one ounce there we go it's a really pretty kind of cloudy Kind of this dreamy pink color. I'm really feeling that. Mm -hmm. White spring, pink spring. And then for this recipe, it's two ounces of fresh grapefruit juice. I have that prepared here. This was about four. You use all that your own? On your own? I did. I did. This is about four grapefruits. So this is the whole two, two sides of this. Two ounces of this into the bottom tin. 
And that is our dry recipe right now. Now we will add our ice, making it a wet situation. So as I add the ice, time is on. We're paying attention to how much time we're going to shake. I ice my tin about three quarters full. And a little more. You procure your top bar tin and you fix the top tin over the bottom tin. And that, can you hear that? There's a vacuum seal that happens when you push it down. And then you want to keep the seal. And so you want to make sure it's off to this kind of di diagonal. And what I do is I put my hand upside down to kind of reinforce that seal and then to shake, which is one of my favorite things in the world. And something that I think everybody should feel empowered to do and explore their own ways. All right, so your left hand, if you're right-handed, your left hand cups the bottom of the tin, your right hand is covering that seal to kind of reinforce the seal, and the whole thing flips over your right shoulder like this. I'm gonna do it again. You plant your feet, you plant your feet, I always say it, you're like up at that, play ball. Because Make a cocktail. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's an athletic, this is a sport. Okay, so upside down here over your right shoulder, and I'm gonna do a 10 second long shake. So, 10, 9. Reminder if anyone has any questions, feel free to use that chat function. We'll be checking it throughout. So, I'm sure we have some aspiring bartenders in the audience tonight. Shake it, Willa. I, sh I shook it. Break the seal. So, if anyone has trouble with that, a best kept secret is that this hand can flex uh, the top of this tin to help break that seal. You get your Hawthorne strainer. I'm chilling my ice, so I'm gonna dump my ice. Have a so we have a question and yes. function. So my friend Rebecca, hello Rebecca. She purchased a cocktail kit from you and it was delivered. And she wants to know how many cocktails that should be. Is she but it has a heavy pour like me. So Willa, how many really good cocktails? <laughs> how many? Okay, so that serves two. Um, but really you can get four drinks out of that. Um, it, it really just depends on how big your glass is, but if you split that in equal parts, you can drink that. You can drink it straight if you wish. Um, I tasted that and that's lovely. Or you can shake it and pour it over ice if you prefer an iced drink. Mm -hmm. Or shake it and serve it up in a chilled glass. And that's the favorite way to do this. And uh, Nancy also asked, how long should you shake for? I, so I did a long 10 seconds. I do 10, nine, eight. Um, you could, you could do a 15 second shake. It will be a little bit um, lighter, if you will, but I like a 10 second shake. More questions? I think that's it for the question. So is that drink ready to go? Can I it's take a ready. So I'm going to garnish this. Um, you can garnish it with a grapefruit wheel or a half wheel. You can garnish it with a lime if you prefer. At this, you know, during this time, it's kind of like what you have in your fridge, perhaps. Um, and let me tell you, any citrus will do in a pinch. Mm -hmm. I happen to have some fresh mint on me. Um, so I'm going to garnish it with that. Yes. I want a little fresh aromatics. Mm. Yeah, so Sarah wrote in and she said she didn't get a cocktail kit already, but where can she find the ingredients? And pretty much these products are carried at any local liquor store. You know, you can get the St. Elder Sample Mousse and also the Granger's Vodka. And uh, yeah, you can pick up those products at any liquor store, really, or go have a cocktail uh, kit delivered right through your website as well, right? Yeah, so I think that you can get, uh, let's see, you can get these products at Bottles. I know they have, um, they have Granger's and St. Elder products. You can get it at Savory Grape. You can get it at, there was another one. Um, yeah, basically a, any good local um, liquor store will, will have these things. And if they don't have it, you can ask them and they can order it and um, 
If they know there's an interest, they'll, get, they'll make an effort to carry it, I think. Sure, sure. Um, I will say these are both really, like, price point wise, very accessible, very affordable. And um, one of the questions I, I often get when uh, helping source ingredients for cocktails is like, okay, I'm on a budget, what can I buy to, um, just to make great solid cocktails without having to get like three different expensive cordials and, you know, this bottle of whatever is $50. It's like, we're, we're, in, we're in the ballpark of like a 40, 40 and $50 for a whole big, beautiful round of beverages. So it's, I don't, I think it's really worth mentioning. Um, budgets are real. I get it, especially in these times. Um, so this is the St. Elder Greyhound and it's been sitting so patiently for us and I'm going to taste it. That's great. I can't not. <laughs> And yeah, that will bring us to actually, since you were talking about St. Elder and how they make it easy to make these refreshing summer cocktails at home, they have several different versions of St. Elder artisanal liqueurs. And those include the elderflower, which many of you are probably already familiar with, the pamplemousse, which we're sampling tonight, the grapefruit, and there's a blood orange version. So right now, I would like to invite everyone to take a look at our poll and see what people think is the best flavor out of all of those. The elderflower, the pamplemousse, or the blood orange. So everyone take a second and put your vote up and we can talk about it. I think I like all three, can't complain. <laughs> see, I've tried all of them. The pamplemousse is very exciting um, because it's a newer product. Um, MS Walker just released this last summer and they also released the Blood Orange. And they're both just really juicy. And when you have a liqueur that comes across as like the, you know, gives you kind of the essence of the real fruit, that's what I'm looking for. Um, yeah, also not to mention, so the, the Pamplemousse, this is 20% alcohol, so that's, 40 proof, um, and so is the St. Elder, so the elderflower. Blood orange is 35% uh, alcohol, which is good, again, good to know. So when you're building these drinks and you're going, oh, this is just a syrupy cordial, and not a, you know, not a ton of alcohol. Not true, not the case, totally um, something to consider when you're mixing and, uh, and tasting. Yeah, so it's like we have our results for the poll now. So, All right. at 32%, go for the elderflower, which is the old familiar, mm -hmm. and 47% voted for the pamplemousse for grapefruit. And then we have 21% for the blood orange. So, looks like we got the right audience tonight because we're doing the pamplemousse. So, this virtual cocktail experience, we're going to be featuring different products in the coming weeks too. So maybe we'll play with some of those other ones too. So Willa, I understand that you can also elevate this Greyhound drink to make your own little version of your garden to glass cocktails. So for those people at home who wanna kick it up a notch and take it to another level, can you demo the somersault for us and tell us about that drink? Yes, yes. So when we started talking about doing this virtual cocktail experience, um, we were talking about the Greyhound, what a, a wonderful summery drink, um, easy for folks to make at home. And I was thinking like, yes, what a, what a great um, recipe to build off of. And, and this, just so you know, is kind of like the behind the scenes of, of my thought process when I'm designing recipes, I very, a lot of times we'll look at classic cocktails, um, the old standbys, and I'll use those formats, those recipes as framework for modern, modern classics or, or contemporary classics, if you will. And my whole genre is garden to glass um, in New England. So I'm using the things that I know are coming into season and that I know are really sustainable products that we can be sourcing uh, either garnish wise or, or muddling wise or sweetening agent wise, we can, we can source those, 
those ingredients from our local farmers and gardeners and grow ourselves in our yard. Um, that's my background. I, I grew up on a small organic herb farm in Rehoboth, Mass, um, just over the Rhode Island line. And yeah, the, I just, I'm so inspired and passionate about fresh local ingredients. I think mm -hmm. uh, fresh ingredients have a lot to teach us. So when I started looking at the format for a Greyhound cocktail, I started thinking about like, okay, how do I want to change this and include something kind of fresh and bright and fun and like that, the little passionate spark, like how do I inspire that spark of like, ooh, this, this is a fun cocktail. Cause that's kind of the point. If you ask me, I want some entertainment out of my recipes. Mm -hmm. uh, part, of, part of my job. So, I started thinking about the Greyhound and then I started thinking about variations of the Greyhound that were already classics. And there's a drink called the Salty Dog, which is a Greyhound. Um, and instead of either a sugared rim, which is old school, um, you use a salt, a salt rim for a Salty Dog. And I thought, okay, that's where we can have some fun, the salted rim. And I thought, okay, what pairs delightfully with grapefruit other than like a, like a sweet and spicy chili salt? Mm -hmm. So that's really easy to make at home. Um, it's take a tablespoon of sea salt. I mean, use whatever salt you have, but if you have some good sea salt, then use it. Um, I like pour salt personally. Malden, you got it? Use yeah. it. Uh, add a shake of chili powder or cayenne. Uh, taste it after you add like a pinch of it because it gets really spicy really fast. I know from experience, like kind of blowing the doors off and not even meaning to when I when I sip my my cute little salted spicy rim. It's like um, so so test that and then if you want to add a little bit of sugar. I like to add um, like organic raw sugar or turbinado sugar. You can add a teaspoon of that for a little bit of um, sweet and savory going on. But for the folks that uh, got the cocktail kits, you've noticed you do not have a kind of straight and narrow uh, spicy sea salt. You have a floral sea salt. Delicious. Um, and I want to tell you about that. Yeah. Thing that so I I'm going to show you. I have a little. One thing that I learned that was really neat is that back in the day, didn't didn't they use like a salt or sugar rim when they used less potent spirits, or they, the spirits weren't as good as they are today, right? So that was a tradition that started from that. Yeah, totally. So um, generally speaking, if the spirits didn't taste very good, they would mask the flavor. Mm -hmm. Like that's very kind of forthright, but it's true. And um, yeah, they would do usually a sugared rim for a sweeter drink and a, a salted rim for a more savory cocktail. Okay. Um, and luckily that's not the case here. We just get to play with a fun rim yep. uh, for the heck of it. And so what I've done is I've blended, um, this is a pink Himalayan sea salt. So you'll notice the mix is like got this kind of pinky mauve color. And then I've added um, a, for, for this mix, it was two tablespoons of the pink Himalayan and then one tablespoon of turbinado sugar, just to give it that little sweetness, little hummingbird nectar. Uh, and then I ground uh, dried rose petals and hibiscus to get a little extra color into the mix and to get just some of those bright floral notes of the summer and to kind of counter and reflect, even um, complement those rosy, fruity tones in the pamplemousse, in the St. Elder pamplemousse. And I did a shake of cayenne in this. So if you get some heat, that is what that is. You can eat all of it. So if you rim your glass or if you dip your citrus in that salt, uh, do not be afraid of the petals. They will not bite you. They are, in fact, very lovely on the palate. Might need a little chew, but that's okay. So how do you get the rim to stick to the glass? Can you show us how you do that? I can, yes. So I'm chilling my glass presently. This is a, a cocktail coupe. 
I'm gonna dump my ice water out. Shake the, that residual uh, water in there. And so this glass is a little wet, so I'm gonna dry it off a little bit. So it just works better. And you pick this up when you're bartending, um, this trick of a cut slice of citrus. And in my case, I have half of a lime. And what you do is you pull, you tilt the glass sideways and you pull the citrus out around the edge of the entire glass. If you'd like a full rim or a half rim, quarter rim, what they call a lick or a lip. Um, so somebody asked, what does it mean to dip the citrus? Dip the citrus. Yeah. Oh, well, you take the citrus and you you spin it around the glass, or you can spin the glass around. And okay. what you're, what you're doing is you're getting this kind of like sweet tart stuff to stick to the side of your glass, so that when you dip it in the salt, when you roll your glass in the salt, it sticks better. If you have a chilled glass and you dip it in the salt, it will totally work. But if you have like right now, I'm talking a lot, and so my glass has gotten a little bit sweaty. <laughs> How embarrassing. It's humid, so. <laughs> um, so to help, that's why I'm using a citrus half um, to get that stickiness so I can roll it in the salt. Without further ado, let me roll this thing. Yeah, in I salt. Did, you know, I, I've cheated before and maybe use the ice cube or something like that, but it's better to use the, the ice cube. cube works. I mean, whatever you're used to doing is fine it's great um it's fun to try different methods and if you like it it sticks and if you don't you go back to what you're doing what you see in a lot of restaurants or bars is they have a tray with a funny wet sponge in there that's usually like lime juice or sometimes they use pineapple juice good to know if you have a pineapple al allergy um they'll just dip the whole glass in that juice and then they'll kind of honk it down in the salt. So you get salt on the inside and the outside of the glass, which is totally fine. They're, they're doing it fast, they're getting it done. If you wanna do it a little bit more delicately, elegantly, what you're really doing is you're saving, um, you're keeping the salt out of the cocktail. So the salt isn't dropping into the drink and, and kind of inadvertently making your solution salty. So it's just a, a way, like kind of a, a slightly more refined way to control your the solution of your drink. So yeah, that's something like things like this. People you just don't you don't know unless you start talking about it. So I hope um I hope I'm kind of decoding some of these. Yeah. these okay. So I'm going to roll my glass. Okay. Use the salt. Ever so gingerly. I'm getting a really that's crystal you're working with there. I can hear it. <laughs> so Pretty, pretty pink, um, sweet, spicy salt, floral. I missed a couple spots where it didn't stick, so I'm just rolling it back. And yeah, so I have a really nice um, sweet and salty rim. You could spend hours on this. We don't have that kind of time, we're rolling. <laughs> so that's ready to go. And now I'm gonna build our second cocktail, the summer salt. So Funny. the summer salt, that is inspired by the Salty Dog Cocktail, which is a salted rim, Greyhound to recap. And then the somersault, the flip, is the glass spinning in the sweet and spicy salt. And it's also like summer, like blossoming gorgeous June summer and salt. So there's some poetry at a, a lot to that. Really there. Yeah. And these are just, again, levels to the design of the recipe, but also the cocktail. And some of the things that I just love so much about working, working on recipes and cocktails and um, working with clients to build drinks that really tell a story and make an experience is really, it, they're stories, that's what it is. And you learn them and you share them and it, yeah, it makes it all much more fun. Okay. So building this recipe, again, I'm beginning with a clean shaker, building dry, so not over ice. If you do build over ice, that's also not a problem. It's just a different style. And I am locating my jigger, and again, so an ounce and a half of Granger's Deluxe Organic Vodka over the 
bottom ten. A bunch of my tippy toes here. Ta-da! Into the bottom ten. Awesome. Fab. Now, three-quarter ounce. This is kind of a typical sour recipe. Very classic um, formula and format. And I believe that once everyone learns this recipe, they are on their way to become not only a great bartender, home bartender, but like, this is the underpinnings of mixology. It's very exciting stuff. Okay, so I'm using my ounce side of the jigger going for a three quarter ounce of my sweetening agent, in this case, the pamplemousse uh, grapefruit, pamplemousse here. Three so quarter. as you're adding that, I noticed a question came in. Uh-huh. So if someone can't have grapefruit because they're on Lipitor or stat, statin, is uh -huh. there something else you can substitute? I know this is a little off the cuff, but can you yeah. think of for that? Yes. Um, so, any so specifically the the cordial or grapefruit juice in this case it would be the I grapefruit think in general yeah um yes so I would use so we're going for when you when we're talking about grapefruit we're talking about this tart sweet tart kind of astringent flavor so mm -hmm. if we want to access those notes we break down what grapefruit is. Grapefruit is a citrus. So you reach for another citrus. You use lime or lemon, orange, sweeter, but um, could also work, blood orange, also sweeter. And then you want the sweetness side of things. So you're using um, a simple syrup, honey, maple, maple you know, they, certain sweetening, sweetening agents have um, very specific flavors that you may or may not want in your beverage. So that's something to consider. And, you know, it's a really good question about, um, like, if you're on Lipitor or on, on this kind of medication, if you can have a grapefruit liqueur. I'm just not sure, um, but I'm very interested to know. So later, yeah. What's a, what about bergamot? Um, <laughs> Oh, and gyros. What about bergamot? Um, <laughs> so there are two kinds of bergamot. There's the botanical bergamot and there's the citrus fruit bergamot. It's kind of like a like an exotic lemon lime that's very kind of like heady and floral. Mm -hmm. Then bergamot uh, uh, as botanical is kind of like related to mint. So I'm assuming you're talking about bergamot, the citrus fruit. Um, we know how to say bergamot too. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Use bergamot. Thank you. That's what you meant. Got it. Oof. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. So let's continue building that let's drink. Continue. I'm like, where was I? I get so I just dive so deep into these <laughs> life questions about what about bergamot. <laughs> I'm just happy I know how to say it now. So I know how to spell it all, but the pronunciation is. Bergamot, yeah. Okay, now let's see. Fresh lime juice, I'm doing equal parts of the R sweetening agent, the pamplemousse, uh, St. Elder pamplemousse, and fresh lime juice. I have so much lime juice here. I'm going to have to have so much fun <laughs> making more drinks. More cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, over in terms of building, we're back over the bottom bar tin and it'll get me in line here put me on the recipe <laughs> over your bottom tin into the bottom tin we have the salted uh the floral salted glass going already so that's wonderful now it's time to add our ice include uh water into our cocktail which is mm -hmm. making and that it's making the cocktail. The ice is making the cocktail. So it's not just a bunch of spirits and juice now. Okay. So I have this about three quarters full, you'd like to see. Okay. And I have my top tin, so I'm ready to shake again. I'll speed through this a little faster. So bottom hand on your left hand on the bar tin. Mm -hmm. Top hand is on the large tin. Clasp over for a vacuum seal. 
So if you didn't hear it, do it again. Get it secure because you don't want this flying over your shoulder uh, as you shake. It's very oh. embarrassing. <laughs> so clamp that down. Uh, I like to put my hand upside down, reinforce that seal. Left hand transitions from my left shoulder to my right ear. So the whole thing flips over. I'll do it one more time. Flips over and I'm going to do a 10 second long shake. So. That's why you have those guns, Lilla. <laughs> One. So now your bottom tin is your large tin. If you do it the other way, your liquids will go everywhere. Don't do it. Break your seal. Hit your with the side. Let the bottom tin drain into the top tin, or the large tin rather. Hawthorne strainer. You could uh, double strain this into your cocktail glass. That means you take a fine mesh strainer and catch any of those little ice shards out of your glass. But I'm going, I'm going free. Let's do it. It's summer. Oh, it's almost summer. And we get this okay. summer salt cocktail. That rim looks really nice. It's beautiful. A little bit of extra color in there, so. Yeah. And now the garnishing part. This is where I have a ball. This is one of my favorite parts of cocktails and mixology and food and um, everything. It's such a, a fun expression of color and um, it just gives the drink and the glass real personality. So I love that. I'm looking yeah, down. I have to do it myself, so I'm gonna pay attention here. I'm yeah. um, okay, so I have lots of fresh mint in here. I'm going to dig around a little bit. I'm looking for my petals. And I've got kind of a palette here. Um, for the folks who ordered drink kits, you may be asking yourself, what are these garnishes? So you had lots of mint in that little container. Uh, you had a bolero marigold. I'll grab a couple of those. There are these pretty like hot amber um, mottled petals with a deeper red orange around um, the edges, really beautiful. And some people had like the brick red version of that. Some people had just the bright, like classic marigold, that like kind of pumpkin yellow orange color. Um, and I chose the Bolero marigold because they're very aromatic. They're like, when you, you know when you smell a marigold, it's, it's a very sharp scent, which I like um, to foil the grapefruit tones of the summer salt and of the greyhound. And yeah, they're just so easy to grow in your garden or in your windowsill. You, you, can't, you can't kill them. I mean, of course, like if you neglect it, sure, but they're, they're just such wonderful plants to have. Um, and they also, keep it help keep insects away from other plants that may be in your garden so what i'll do is i'll plant a tomato plant and i'll i'll kind of dodge both sides of it with um marigolds just kind of giving you a sense of of why i'm growing this how easy it is to grow um where i'm growing it in my backyard okay so i've got these bolero marigolds and i would like to see let's see there's so many things you can do with garnishing but I'm, I'm gonna bring this up a little bit for you. So I would like to see an asymmetrical garnish. And in this case, I will use odd numbers um, with my petals as you do in, in all of garnishing. It's very similar to, to florals um, and design in general. The eye and the palette likes things in ones, threes, fives, and so on. So I'll begin with one in the center and you think, oh yes, beautiful, it's already kind of washing away here, but that's all right. And then I'll do another one on top of it. I want one more, let's see. I also have some calendula in here. So if you got some of these, some of these little petals, this, this is a medicinal um, blossom. It's very good for your skin and- um, And you can eat those petals, right? Are they- Yeah, okay? yeah. So all of these are grown organically and, um, or in this case, these are grown naturally and, um, 
you could eat them. It's like eating a salad. They just happen to be a little more floral, botanical than, than your normal lettuce greens. Okay, so I've, I've found another petal. I'm going to place it, lift this up again, uh, as a kind of third, and I'm almost reconstructing a flower out of petals, which I think looks very lovely. And I didn't intend for it to be kind of like smack dab centered in the middle of the cocktail, but it's working, so I'm rolling with it. Um, that's just an example of like, beautiful things happen when you're garnishing, whether you intend them to or not. And it's nice to just kind of go with the, the abstract form of it. I enjoy that. I have a, a really sweet, fragrant uh, sprig of fresh mint. So I'm gonna offset this on the side of the glass. Doing that, I saw another question popped in. So how many, how many versions of a recipe do you do before you know you have the one? Isn't that the question? Um, <laughs> sometimes I get it off the bat and I just know what I'm going for. And sometimes I'll just keep kind of working on a recipe until you have that like, ah, moment where your mouth just goes, yes. And your eyes go like, hey, that looks good. That's a good color. Um, and I, I kind of go through like the, the art vocab, um, like color, texture, form, taste, scent, um, just all of our, you know, all of our sen sense attributes here. And I really love to go through each of my recipes every season and, and kind of play around with different fresh ingredients. Um, and when new spirits and new products come to the market, I really like to swap those in just to see if I have what I think is kind of the pinnacle of that recipe. But I, I do a lot of playing and a lot of um, workshopping. And a lot my, of <laughs> my friends will tell you, um, it doesn't get old. It's really fun to taste through recipes. It's, um, it's, it can be a really wonderful social activity because it's, you get, to, you get to drink it. What other kind of art form other than food and beverage do you literally get to digest? Mm -hmm. It's become part of you. Uh, and it's about, it's about that experience, right? That's why we love wine. That's why we love drinking together and cheersing, even if it's from afar. Yeah. It's what? still a meaningful way to connect. Yeah. Okay. okay. It's time for me to taste this. I'm gonna give you one more kind of. Oh, good. Yeah. I see? have one here too. Mine's not as good as yours, but I, this I'm. Is great. Look at that. And I, it, did you did you add ice to yours? Um, I I I kind of winged it. I didn't even have time to shake it, so I just. Threw no, it no, in. that's fine. And that's that's <laughs> why I love designing these recipes, especially as cocktail kits, because I want there to be some real room for flexibility for, for folks at home. Like, you don't have ice, drink it. It's okay. fine. If you don't, you know, if you don't have the right garnish, like, roll with it. Use, it looks use pretty good for me, I have to say, so. Good. All good? right, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm tasting. Here we go. Oh, that's really good. And I got some of the rim in the, um... Mm. Oh, it's from oh. So, I get like off the bat, I get just a really nice um, kind of like, what is the word? Like it's an ethereal sweetness that's coming from the grapefruit liqueur. I'm getting some heady florals from the rim. I'm getting salt. So that you used in the rim again, someone asked. Say that again? Someone asked, Sharon asked, what oh. was is it? Sharon, let me tell you. I used uh, dried organic rose petals and organic hibiscus and I didn't grow those I didn't forage those those are I sourced from um, where was it I think it was for um, frontier herbs they're one of the main companies that I sourced from if I can't get um, locally sourced products in this case I just I just like the quality of um, their hibiscus and their rose so I went that, with that. it elevates that that greyhound just like you said so yeah, it but it's, you know, you can just do that with the St. Elder sample mousse and 
the dangers of vodka and some grapefruit. Keep it simple too. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I just one more note before um, before I start drinking this cocktail and and, and let you all uh, Friday yet. for the rest of your evening. Um, there are rose beach roses coming into season right now. So if you are interested in edible florals, you can forage um, wild beach roses. It's Rosa rugosa. So um, if you don't know what that is, Google it. Or if you hit me up on Instagram, I can send you some pics. Or you can always email me too. Happy, happy I'll to near the beach where I go so that people can know you can use them. Yeah, yeah. So thank you so much. Um, I am so excited to be able to kind of kick off this series. I think it's a really fabulous idea. I hope um, we can do it and uh, call it the vir virtual cocktail experience and tapping into some of these products from St. Elder and Greenbergs. And hopefully people will continue to sign up for the next one. But as you're home, take a picture of that cocktail that you just made, if you made one, or if you make one over the weekend even. And um, if you tag it, drink St. Elder, and then you use the hashtag St. Elder RI, you can be entered for a chance to win a cocktail kit too. So everybody be sure to do that and enjoy your drink at home and uh, see what we have in store for you next time. Thanks for joining us. Just gonna jump back in. Thank you, Jamie, so much for hosting tonight. Thank you, Willa from Little Bitta. Thank you so much to Rhode Island Monthly and St. Elder Artisanal Liqueurs. Um, we're so happy to have the sponsorship and partnership with you guys. So next Wednesday night, 7 p.m., uh, June 17th, tune in again. We're actually gonna have a new bartender and some new products, so change things up a little bit for you guys. So thank you so much again for tuning in and we hope you guys all enjoyed it. So thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Willa. Thank you. So, so happy. Yeah. Cheers. See you later.